Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy, and I am here doing a reading for the collective <laughs> um, regarding things that we may be being faced with during the, this uh, transit of the Pisces moon and uh, all the other planetary activities that are going on that I find that people are doing a lot of uh, questioning of their values, of the, who they are, and what it is that they really are aspiring to, what are their dreams, and who is it that they are attached to, and why. And it's not just those of us who think that we are, you know, spiritually awake. It's also happening to people who are just going about their daily lives because it is what it is because it's still energy and it's still planetary and that's what's going on. So I'm going to be getting cards from the huh. All right, I'm going to be getting cards from the uh, Zodiac uh, astrological reading cards that we used last in January. Then that's going to tell us what the different um, Zodiac sign, what energy you're going to be dealing with, what planet and what, which of your houses is these events of this coming month or this time period during this moon. Are going to be affecting for you so which of the houses and what energy you're going to be calling upon and which planets are I'm which houses are being affected by these planetary movements okay so hmm. all right so the first Zodiac sign that you are going to be uh, emulating the qualities within you that you're going to be calling on or you're going to be employing is Scorpio. This energy is intense, masterful, thoughtful, charming, secretive, and possessive. So this could be talking about doing research, doing some background checks, spying, doing a lot of uh, planning, strategy, strategizing. Okay, strategizing. Strategizing and using your charm in order. Uh, your charm is part of your strategy. Ah, uh, So you'll be using your charm, your diplomacy as part of the strategy to getting through this time. All right. Somebody said you're going to act like somebody tried to raise you. So you tried to raise you. So that means that you're going to be well behaved. And the romance angel card that has come up here for you is healing family issues. You, your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So this could have, this could mean that this might be a touchy subject and you have to use your charm and your know-how and your knowledge of the subject in order to maneuver this. And the tarot card that came for that was Ten of Cups. So this is good. This is good. Your ability to be thoughtful and secretive and st strategic when it comes to family issues are going to end up healing those family issues. You're on the right, you will be on the right track if this is the energy that you choose to employ. Ah, shit. Planet Venus. 
part of you that desires beauty, success, indulgence, and valuables. Okay, so for some of you, you are going to be doing, using your seductive charms. And this could be anyone, male or female. But you are going to be presenting yourself as alluring and strategic and confident and confident confidence is the key confidence carrying yourself in a confident manner being comfortable with this, who you are in accepting the power, the power that you hold within you to master the situation with the tools that you already have on hand. Whew. Express your love. Go ahead and make a romantic gesture. This was on top of Venus. So this would be saying that you should be coming forth maybe with your feelings, letting whoever it is know how you feel about them. Maybe if it's family, friends, or loved one. That would be part of healing these family issues is expressing your love for your family, letting them know how important they are to you. But this came in the reverse. So for those of you that this may be an issue, it could be because you are not expressing yourself. You're not letting your family members know how you feel. Another, okay, for some of you, this is about you starting to recognize your ancestors plain and simple. That's the healing that's going to lead you to your Ten of Cups. You have to start focusing your, putting some of your focus on your ancestral legacy, on giving recognition and establishing a relationship with your ancestors. And you haven't been doing that. And that's what you're trying they're trying to lead you to do. And the tarot card that came up with that was the sun. Mm. So this is saying that there is going to be a happy ending and there's going to be a chance for a new beginning. All right, there is going to be a chance for love and compassion, some freedom. But again, these sunflowers represent your ancestors. They are at, for some of you, the holdup may be, or any blockage that you may be feeling in a relationship may just be as simple as you starting to recognize who you are, where you came from, and giving and honoring that and not being ashamed of who you are and where you came from, what your culture is. Who are your pe people? Who are your people? <laughs> right? As much as you can know about them. Okay? For some of us, it's not as easy to find out. We can only find out to a certain generation and then we get a blockage because of slavery and uh, human trafficking across continents. But you know something about somebody. And if you don't know nothing, if you don't know nothing about somebody, find out. Start doing some research. If you don't want to set up an ancestral altar for whenever, whatever reason, okay. 
Start doing your family tree. Start documenting the history of your people. And as you do that, just that gesture of starting to do that research is going to open you up to messages and guidance. Even if it's just to guide you to the right library source for the newspaper that holds information about something that your great grandfather did, you know, you never know. You never know what may spark your connection, your reconnection. Because you're connected already, you just don't remember it. You're down here on a mission for your family. And maybe you've gotten swayed or dissuaded away from your journey by life and other things, love, losses. I think what they're saying for during this time period is to work on reconnecting with that part of who you are. Even before you're finding out what your purpose is, what your contract is, what you have been sent to do, the way that you open up your ability to, to find that answer is to establish a relationship with your ancestors. They want to be remembered. They want to be honored. They want to have their names called. Mm. They want to not lose their place in history. The history of your family. They want to be able to make sure that this, that their stories, that their circumstances get passed down to your children and your great grandchildren and, and to continue the tradition that was broken when they were kidnapped and brought here. Okay, so you may not know that, but now what are you going to go do going forward? Okay. What is the story going to be? Tell your own story. Don't let anybody, don't, don't depend on the schools, the history books, or anybody else to tell your story. Tell your story fast. <laughs> That's that song by um, Stevie Wonder, right? Jesus loves the children of America. Oh, you got to tell your story fast. And if you lie, it'll come to pass. Mm. Yeah. Let's um, start working on ourselves and telling our stories, gathering our family histories and composing those family journals and diaries. If you have pictures, you add pictures. If you don't, just tell the story. Tell the story so it can be preserved for future generations. They don't want they don't want us to be lost to one another again. Mm. Okay, so the house. <laughs> ah, the third house. Doing things in your community and in your neighborhood. Learning something about your local neighborhood. All right, so we're talking about libraries, mm -hmm. researching, history in your community. So maybe your family grew up in a certain place. Maybe there are things that you can find at the library, physically going in and looking through the books, to the reference decks, or Googling, doing research. <sighs> Some of you, there is... In, in your in your attic or in your closets or in the basement somewhere there are maybe documents things that hold interesting information relevant some things that are relevant all of it is relevant but
the information is in hidden places within the family home. If there's a family home, some of you may have a family home. And the there's information somewhere in a book behind a wall, behind a uh, armoire, a dresser, hidden, a safe, or some kind of enclave behind something that was left there a long time ago, and you may or may not have known about, you know, you may not have been the person that left it there. It may have been left there a long time ago, but because nothing has really been moved around in the room, no one has ever found it. So there may be a, a reason, maybe you're going to do some painting or something, rearranging, and someone may come across this. I'm not telling you to, you know, start digging up, taking the walls out. I think that this is something that's accessible, but is covered. It could be up in the, the chimney. I don't know about how that is. A fireplace that doesn't, that, that's not being used. What is, it's workable, but it's not being used. It could be something there for some of you. Hidden inside of the flu or the chimney or something. I don't know. I don't even know how you would get in there, but I'm just saying. There's something hidden somewhere for somebody that has to do with information. Or, or it is just going down to your, uh, maybe a museum locally, town hall, the library. Hmm. Schools? Old yearbooks. Old yearbooks for schools in the area where your ancestors live once they started taking photographs and stuff of people. Look there. Go see if there are yearbooks that, you know, like if you have an idea where, you, where people lived. And for some of you, this that if you can't go back generations, this may be a way to start it. First, using those yearbook pictures maybe or yearbook information could lead for somebody is going to lead you towards some answers so you might have to actually go to the old school or maybe there'll be a reunion and you will go to that and at that reunion you will get some information about an ancestor or an ancestral connection between yourself and someone else someone who maybe you went to school with and you didn't realize that they were related to you and maybe then you'll get the opportunity to get more information for somebody that's going to be the way it works apparently so that's what's coming through all right so and you get engagement your life is ascending to a higher level of commitment so for some of you this is that you will be getting engaged or at least you and your partner will be becoming more comfortable with one another and sharing more about yourselves with one another. But this was in the reverse. So, again, you're not communicating. You're not expressing yourself. And this is affecting your... Ex hmm. Could be affecting your standing in the community. Someone is not engaging because they feel it is going to affect the way they are standing in the community. The way they look to others is the reason why they are not engaging and they are not expressing themselves because they are trying to heal family issues with 
but they know that their their new beginning is being blocked by their hesitation or their failure to express themselves. Okay. And four cards came out, so we have oh, All right, so for engagement, we got temperance. This is some talking about patience, balance, spirituality. A higher calling. Nine of Wands. Protecting oneself. So you could be dealing with a Leo or a Sagittarius or some fire. So, well, this is Aries. So, no, this is not Aries. This is general. I'll be honest. I, when I was uh, first starting to do this, my intention was to do a reading for Aries. But Spirit said to make it general for this time. But if you're an Aries, maybe this is um, a special message that will resonate with you. Three of Swords. So some type of heartbreak. And then Two of Pentacles. Deciding to stand up despite a heartache. Protecting yourself, having faith, maintaining your balance, maintaining your spirituality, along with your spirituality and your material. Mm. Material, okay. Spirituality and materialism. Spiritualism and materialism. Whatever. Those two sides of whatever is going on. You're being patient and you are being balanced. Looking at something from both sides of it. At the same time, you're protecting. yourself from hurt you're protecting yourself from the hurt and you are standing up in that decision that you have made standing strong in the decision that you have made to be patient while you protect yourself from heartbreak is this anticipated heartbreak or a heartbreak that happened before mm -hmm. so this may be why you have chosen not to engage with okay someone is is not engaging with others outside in their community because they're protecting themselves They've decided that this is the way to protect themselves from being hurt. And they're just waiting for balance. They're waiting to find the right combination of spirituality and materialism. But you're not, you're not expressing yourself and you're not being seen. Then you're not going to get that healing. Now, okay, somebody is afraid of their own sensuality. And they think that they cannot maintain their spirituality if they venture too far out into the regular world. Because they are aware of the way that they... 
they're aware of their, they're aware of the way people respond to their magnetism and their charm and so they're cutting themselves they're standing back you have the ten of cups here and the sun this is this is good okay this could be good a new beginning happy family feel, uh, healing those issues could also be saying maybe not talking is what is going to take you to the new beginning that could be this too the less you say the less you say and just wait and watch while you protect yourself And stand strong in your beliefs while you don't say anything. Hmm. Not saying anything and just being optimistic. Is that what you're being asked to do? Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Do we have the after tarot around here? That could be. What is this? This is the before. Okay. Let's see if we have the after. I don't think this is that. No. Mm -mm. All right. I don't want to use the before. I'm not led for that. I'm led for the after tarot, but perhaps mm. excuse me, folks. I should have, but I didn't because I didn't believe that I was going to get to that. All right, so let's use the vice versa. Okay, so let's do this. Move this here. This is here. Here. Okay. All right. So for the collective, in reference to this situation, what is it that those who are led to this video, this reading, what is it that they need to know about things going forward? So we have the Four of Swords. Okay. Four of Swords on that side. This is something is going on in behind the scenes that you may not be aware of. Okay, you or someone around you could be a male father figure uh, who is an air sign, which would be Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. Could be. Mm. And then we have the Nine of Swords. This is. Someone who is blocking out things around them and constantly looking at the pain. They're recognizing their pain. They're recognizing maybe the pain that they have inflicted on others. So again, this could be a father figure, and this is about a family issue. So maybe someone is doing some deep soul searching and looking at the, their experiences, going over their patterns in life, maybe. Their life patterns, come on. <laughs> their life patterns. Someone 
maybe trying to make sense of the things that have happened to them and the choices that they have made in this life. So this could, mm. and we have the five of wands. So again, this is about self-defense, okay, preparing yourself for battle. Could have something to do with family or tribal things. Someone that you may have crossed paths with before, you may be coming up against. Or an issue that you have previously experienced, addressed, is coming back, has re resurfaced itself. Ah, yeah. And yeah, we have the uh, Knight of Swords. So this is some, some message that is received quickly or sent. So this could be you sending a message or a message being, yeah, a message being sent or something being said, a truth that comes out of darkness. Mm, okay, so this would be an air sign or an earth sign. So there's an air sign. Could have fire in it in your chart also. Of course. Yeah. So someone has been taking time to look at their life and maybe address some battles that they had come up against previously. And now they may have found an answer and they're coming forward with the truth, for, with the truth. They may have found out a truth while, while they were doing their own self, their own meditations about their own life, and what they have done and experienced. They have come to a realization maybe that they have an enemy that is close by. <sighs> that they're facing an enemy that they faced before. Someone that they know. Ooh. And they are taking that information to the Empress. So someone has just realized that they have been fighting an enemy that they fought before. And now they want to take this information. They want to talk to their mother, perhaps. They want to take this information to someone who they feel comfortable with, someone who they admire. Mm. Number three is the Empress. Huh. And uh, this is talking about gratitude. 
this is saying that the steps that you are being guided to take start with being grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this on this side. The Empress is the bringer of life, and all life has an end. The wheat will be cut down, and the red roses of love will drop their petals. This knowledge doesn't take away from life's joy. In fact, it adds to it. If we live in gratitude for the present moment, life and death, knowing, okay, start this again. This knowledge doesn't take away from life's joys. In fact, it adds to it. If we live in gratitude for the present moment, life and death are two sides of the same card. Behind the eagle shield, the sparrow's nest is sheltered and the flowers bloom. These sh flowers are asphodels, A-S-P-H-O-D-E-L-S. -E they are in bloom. And this is the flower that blooms in the land of death. The abundance of the empress the abundance that the Empress gives so generously is still indicated on this side of the card, but it is a message that you should also think towards the future. Take, back, take a step back and take a look at the bigger picture, as well as the present joys that are being presented towards you. If you want your happiness to last, take it seriously. Gratefulness is the door through which all happiness enters again. Gratitude. Dealing with honoring your ancestors. Dealing with being grateful for all that you have experienced. All that you have accomplished. All that you have been through and survived. And all that you have gained. The knowledge that you may have gained through these experiences. They want to be acknowledged. The ancestors want to be acknowledged. And that is the first step towards opening the door of healing. Mm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Seven of swords. This is the side that I saw when I looked down, but it flipped over to the other side. So this is about trying to get away with something, trying to get away with telling half-truths, not the full story thinking that that is going to work. Holding back information. Holding back information. Because you feel that that's going to keep you from being revealed. Keeping the real story from being revealed by only telling half of it or some of it so you're dropping some of the burden but you're not telling everything you're not going to reveal your hold your whole hand uh-huh all right spirit mm. all right so let's see what seven of swords is real quick we all know what seven of swords is right not to be trusted yeah something sneaky is happening behind the scenes but it's not going to take a lot to uncover it. And it can be fixed discreetly and quietly if you want to. But you may not be getting away with this much longer. Set things straight as soon as you can because your business is about to be revealed. 
And this says that the person who is being unethical may not even be aware of how much damage that they're doing. Because there's something in this situation, in the history of this situation, that will hurt more when the real truth comes out. Talking about putting your cards on the table, including all your feelings of betrayal and uh, past hurts. So again, if this is something that has to do with family, this may be an issue that you thought that you had already tangled with, that you had already addressed and set aside. Something in the past, it could have something to do with a female figure who could be a mother. But it's something that you felt that you could just take it to your grave. That's what I'm getting. A secret or a something that you have tried to address or that you thought that you had addressed. But this time period is going to bring this issue back for you to look at it. And when the time comes for you to look at it, that's when you're the truth is going to come out. So it seems that this is not something that you can avoid. This is something that you can uh, prepare yourself. Look at this. The bottom of the deck here is the nine of cups. If I, this is vice versa. So then the other, nine, the other end of the deck, the top of the deck just then was to the nine of wands. Yeah, this is about doing some really hard battles, some real hard work in order to protect yourself, okay? And maybe you are starting to leave some things, some of your defenses to the side. But there is still one thing that you are holding on to, a secret that you are not willing to part with. Or someone around you is not willing to, they want to hold on to this last passion. And Nine of Cups. Because they see that they're, they feel that that's where their happiness lies. Two nines. You got three nines here. Nine of swords to nine of wands, the nine of cups, and the ten of cups. There's a wish that you have manifested that you can visualize coming towards you. Someone that you feel that you may be able to lower your defenses with, <clears throat> but you're still holding on to one. You're still holding on to something. You still have to feel like you have to be able to hold on to this one thing because if you allow this one thing to be known, you'll be vulnerable. Because this this wand that he's holding has a little lamp lamp on lamp turn on like on top of it. And he's holding it, but it's not on the ground. So he's holding it up, it's not connecting with the ground, it's just standing in front of him. And perhaps if he puts it down, it'll make the connection in light. And so he doesn't want the light, he doesn't want any light on that. He doesn't want anything to be revealed about that because that may Put a blockage between him and his dreams, the things that he dreams of. 
So it's something that is a secret that is being held close to the chest that's going to come out anyway. <clears throat> but it's being held on to. You or someone around you is holding on to this secret that has come back to the surface, something that they had dealt with before, they thought that they had dealt with before, something that they have always been fighting off, and they want to be truthful, they want to come and share it with you, but still holding on to one piece of this that they don't want to be exposed. So if this happens, someone's coming to you with honesty, understand and know in the back of your mind that that's most of the truth, but it's not all of the truth. So are you going to accept the truth that you have been given and work with it? Or are you going to refuse to engage with this person until you feel that you have the full truth. But how would you ever know, right? You could ask your ancestors. That's how you would know. Let them tell you what is going on. Let's see who else can chime in to this little situation we got ourselves into here. Whoever is watching this during this time period of leading up to and including the time of the Pisces moon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know what I'm looking for. And I don't see it. An oracle card that would uh, maybe we can uh, Sorry, folks. Too much of a good thing, right? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's see what the conscious spirit oracle wants to say about this. Hmm. Use a good guidance there. Okay. What is it that we need to know as a collective for those who this situation is resonating with? What is it that they need to know about the way they're, they should handle this situation that is going to be presenting itself? A family issue, someone that they are close to, someone who they perceive themselves having a bright future with that may be holding information number 36 abundance i'm grateful for the abundance of nature and the universe the universe and nature provided in my life number 36 again three and six adds up to nine gratitude the answer to the way you handle this lies in your ability to express your gratitude to the creator and to your ancestors, they want to be recognized. They want to be attended to. And until you attend to it, to them, you're not going to get the abundance that they have for you. Ah, oh, number 39. <sighs> the flames of wisdom. The old crone. <laughs> Being open to all of life's wisdom and sharing it with gratitude. Again. Gratitude and sharing what you know, sharing what you've learned, the wisdom of the experiences that you've had in life. Being willing to share and talk about and be open with the goodness of God, the goodness that you have had up to, ooh, look at this, number 42, the wheel of life. I'm guided by the cycles of life and, and live in complete harmony with them. It's the cycle of birth, growth, 
and death. You may have experienced this cycle recently. And I think what they're saying is that this is something, this experience that you've had a lot of, you've had a lot of experiences of loss. Mm. But there has been a wisdom gained through this wisdom, through this experience of a loss. And they're asking you to bring that experience to life, bring that experience and share the wisdom that you have learned and you have gained with others. So this again is about your legacy, documenting your family history, your history, the wisdom, how you how you are, you survived, how your family survived, how you survived your own experiences in this life. Ooh. Number 12, reach out. I reach out my hand and my heart to connect to and unite all of humanity. Someone has some work to do that's going to be beneficial for humanity, for their community. One and two is three. Three is divinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Judeo-Christian um, traditions. Mm. And four and two is six. And one and two is three. So again, nine. Hmm. Yeah. You can't, the answer doesn't lie On, the answer lies within and without, but the path to the answer is through the ancestors. They're going to lead you. They're guiding you. They're trying to guide you towards your root chakra. Your roots, where you come from, what makes you you. I have everything I need to survive and grow on the physical plane. Being comfortable with yourself, who you are, the way that you present to the world. Earth elemental, number six, again, family, roots, abundance, gratitude. I fully accept the abundance that the earth bestows upon me. Your roots, where have you, where do you come from? Who are your people? <laughs> and being comfortable with who you are. Using wisdom, knowing that everything is part of this journey, this wheel of life, gratitude, facing the uh, things that already, that you thought that you had already addressed or that you had put away or that nobody was going to ever find out about. Maybe they won't, maybe they didn't, but you know about it. And maybe it's something that you just need to decide within yourself. Maybe what it is, is, is this has come up. Maybe something is giving you the freedom to do something that maybe you had decided that you didn't want to do or that you had been preventing yourself from doing. And now you have the freedom to do it, and maybe you're doing it. But do you really want to do it? Are you doing it because you're free to do it, or are you doing it because it's part of you? And... Maybe just asking you to take a look at that. You know how they say that um, when you hold a kid too tight at home, you know, then when they get out, they get, they go buck wild, you know, they go crazy getting all kinds of stuff. 
I think that this may be something that might be happening for someone that they're getting a chance to redo their childhood or relive their youth. So it could be a midlife crisis for some people, who knows, during this time. And some of the choices that they make or may be making or have made has to do with the way that they present themselves in the community to others. But they're being told now that there are issues that need to be addressed about their family, their relationship to their ancestors. And the divine has been very patient with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if they don't tell their truth, their truth is going to be revealed quickly. So you need to be are being made aware of this so that you can be grounded because it seems like this is going to be some uh, earth shattering information that you might be receiving or revelation or maybe something you already knew, you know, or you already suspected. Okay. Maybe something you already suspected. But it wasn't your truth to tell because it was just your intuition. This is give, maybe giving you also a chance to recognize that your intuition is really good. It's really powerful. Or that you should pay more attention to your intuition because maybe your intuition told you this secret. Don't look at me. <laughs> told you this, gave you this information or a glimpse of it a long time ago. And you kind of just like dusted it off or ignored it, put it aside. That could very well be what this is. The lesson for you as you deal with this or you witness this. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. How do you deal with this issue if this is someone around you a family member that is sharing their truth finally and what are you be grateful for your intuition I said so instead of letting this make you so sad the way to handle it is to recognize that you just got a confirmation of one of your gifts. For somebody, oh, well, we got three cards here. Oh, okay. The first one we have is the mirror guardian. So this is, again, looking, reflecting. This could be taking time to reflect. So taking time to look at your history, to look at your the journey of yourself and of your family. You are maybe the guardian of that information. Take the time to reflect. The next card we have here is... Hmm. Oracle. Wait for important information. That's what's happening. This secret is just the beginning of it. There's, it's going to have layers, I'm thinking. <laughs> this is something that's going to have layers. And the next wise one. Grow within your current situation. And this is reminiscent of Flames of Wisdom, the Chrome. So, there could be older women around you, your ancestors, your ancestral line. It could be females, maternal side of your family. 
It doesn't have to be just females in general in your family line. Hmm. Here and on the other side, those who have transitioned and those who haven't. People around you have wisdom, as do those on the other side. And they're saying that you are going to grow within this situation as you pay attention to those messages. And as you patiently wait for more information. So not to act off of your initial response. Allow yourself time to reflect and think about what's happening. What, what about this experience that you are witnessing is something like an experience that you yourself have had. So maybe when this family member or this friend or whoever, this loved one starts to reveal their secret, you'll be able to connect with it because you've had similar experiences in your own past that maybe you were not ready to talk about or you have talked about, but you just now are understanding the connection. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. This is about taking time to reflect on your strengths and challenges and how far you've come and recognizing your gifts. Ashe, exactly what I've said. Paying attention to your gifts and being grateful for the gifts that you've been given. All right, so let's take a look at wise ones. Mm -hmm. Wise ones is knuckle down, be reliable and open and committed. Be open to the wisdom that's coming from your ancestors, the messages. The raven in her hand represents the ability to overcome the darker times and be reborn again and again. She helps you tap into the wisdom to overcome whatever life throws at you. Wisdom being the information stored in your soul rather than the information acquired in, your, in this lifetime and to learn from the experiences of your elders. So this is saying that the information, the tools, all that you need, you already have it. Your spirit guides have always been there with you. They have wisdom and information that is stored within your DNA. Not just what you know, not just what you know from your lifetime experiences or education or whatever. This is instinctual knowledge. That there's nothing that you cannot overcome. The crone is the most psychic and aware aspect of the goddesses because she has been through many of life's challenges and overcome many setbacks. So there may be someone or some information that comes to you or whoever this is from a trusted elder through messages from the ancestors or someone around them that they respect, could be a mother figure, that is gonna help them to understand how they can use this situation to the benefit of everyone. I'll say. Oracle. This talks about being open and receptive to receiving information. Get all your facts so that you can make a decision that is in line with your integrity. The oracle is the truth seeker and the insight bringer. The ancestor who will be your best outspoken girlfriend. Someone who will tell you exactly what you need to hear in order to move forward. She is reminiscent of the Oracle of Delphi, a psychic priestess of ancient Greece,
who is able to receive information and make predictions. She holds a bowl that has sacred smoke rising out of it, bringing the message to look beyond all that you see and gather information in order to make an accurate evaluation of your current situation. So you got to look inside of yourself, listen to the messages that are being brought to you by your ancestors, people around you who do readings or, you know, that kind of stuff. Getting in touch with spirit. Gather the information and don't say anything. It's not time yet. You don't have to say anything. This is all being handled for you to learn a lesson as you watch these events play out. Anything else? Ooh, ooh okay. Mm. Hold the space. Now here we got this druid. And mountains. Stand your ground. Be true to who you are. And just look at those rocks. And right there, it, looked, it looks like a fish to me. So maybe there's Pisces involved in this somehow. But that's what it looked like. Those two mountains, the way they're sitting together, it looks like a fish. Okay? Like a goldfish. Druid, hold the space. Yeah. I think this is kind of like the... um. Virgo, what is that? The hermit, kind of like that, maybe. So someone who is seeking or bringing knowledge. Someone who knows hmm, how to hold things together. Yeah. Don't make any sudden moves or any changes. Stand strong. Knowing that you are where you're supposed to be. The Druids are the ancient wise ones of the British Isles. They have a deep connection with the earth, the sun, and the moon. They are the scholars who created the Ogman, Ogham, O-G-H-A-M, tree language. And they were known for their creative skills in storytelling, poetry, and craftsmanship. So you're being guided to dig deep within and hold your place. Stand up, stand your ground. If you're wondering what to do next or have some anxiety about what is unfolding in your life, it's time to shift your perceptions and move back to a state of trust. Don't change plans or do anything drastic. Just trust in the process and let everything happen as it needs to before you do anything else. Think of a tree. It has strong roots, yet it continues to grow and bear fruit. Your life will be a reflection of that. Ashe, pay attention to your business. Pay attention to your connection with your ancestors during this time. Don't make any decisions. Don't make any life changing decisions. Don't sign any papers that you can avoid during this time. I think it's going to last until like March 20th or a little bit afterwards. It's the retrograde. Also, that's going to be going on during this time. Like I said, I don't, I just listen to these people and read these articles. I didn't study this like that. But I know that the planetary movements affect our behavior collectively. We may not all have the same experience, but they're similar. That's why we can do these general readings and they uh, resonate with people all over the world, right? Yep. Standing your ground, holding firm to what you believe Know that heaven and earth are supporting you. 
hold firm to what you believe in or the thing that you are focusing on because it's absolutely right. And heaven and earth are supporting you. This talks about deep roots in the earth again. Being around for thousands and thousands of years. Being unshakable. Being a home to many animals. And having been climbed by many humans. They've seen many seasons come and go. And no matter what has happened to them, they remain strong, immovable, and unshakable. And so, they offer the spiritual energies of strength and reliance and resilience. Okay, so being able to remain steady, all right, to. Remain in their truth and in place. Resiliency. Connections to the Great Mother and the Great Father. Your spirit is more powerful than you think. If you're not sure what you need to do next, this card is inviting you to stay exactly where you are. Talk things over with those around you. See, I just got a ding. Talk things over with those around you and know that change will come to you. So a change is going to come. <laughs> you will be whole and well at the end of this current situation. And it will not stand in the way of your future growth and expansion. So whatever happens, you're going to be surviving this current situation that maybe has you a little confused. Hmm. The bottom of the deck is snake, shed old skin. I think they're saying to not be afraid. Okay. You are changing. You're growing. You're expanding. Some things are not going to remain. And other things, well, but you're going to change the way you look at your, the situation, the way you look at your power, your gifts, and the way you look at the the um, position of God in your in your life and the position of your ancestors in your life. The importance of your relationship with your ancestors is what this is about right now. Taking the time to reflect on how you've, how strong you've been and being gra grateful for the support that you have gotten from your spirit guides, from your soul team, from your family. Sit down and write them a letter if that's all you can do. But start off with gratitude. I think that's the message that we would have for you today. And let's see if we can get a postcard from Spirit. Why not? Let's see. Perhaps they will confirm this message. Or at least give us some, uh, I guess so, quickly and <laughs> give us some more encouragement. Oh, you are divine beauty. Dearest you, we have a secret to share with you. If you act as if all is well, it will be. Act as if you are brave and you will be a magnet for love and experience the love of spirit. Act as if your prayers have been answered, as if you are truly in sync with good fortune. How you think is how you will see this world. Interact with it and draw conclusions from it. 
If you want to be the person who has the life you want, co-creating and loving what is yours, you need to start acting as if that were truth. Don't worry about the condition in your life that seems empty or cavernous or chaotic or barren. These are temporary and they don't even count. Defy them and act as if you're the luckiest person on this planet. You will be, for you already are. That's the real secret. You are infinite potential. Ashe, loving you as much, loving you so much that rainbows explode in the ether. Wow. I think that that's a confirmation that your ancestors are doing what they have promised you that they would do. And they're just telling you to just relax and sit back and watch the miracle happen right in front of your eyes. Be grateful for that protection and that help and for that love. You already are the luckiest person in the world. And now they're getting ready to show you just how lucky and loved you are. So I hope that this message resonates with someone and reassures someone of uh, what they're experiencing and the way to handle these challenges during this time period. And I'm grateful for Spirit for giving me the opportunity to share this message with you. And uh, we'll see what else I'm going to be doing. But um, I know I'm losing most of you by this point. But I will be doing a opening of this deck. It's the duck, Dust to Onyx, a melanated tarot deck. All right. And it is developed by Courtney Alexander. She is the artist and the writer. She developed these cards. The melanated tarot deck. So. Just keep your um, notification, make sure you hit the notification bell so that when I open this deck, you will be able to participate in the live opening and uh, we may even get the uh, author to chime in. All right. So this is a deck that was created by Courtney Alexander as 78 Nix Media Collage paintings that are accented with gold and holographic foils. And it features cultural myths, uh, symbolism, history, and icon within the Black diaspora. So, uh, speaking of the ancestors, right? This is a tarot deck that she has developed with a lot of love, a lot of um, wisdom, all right? A desire to see the images of African peoples depicted. In, this in a tarot that she felt comfortable with those images, right? So um, I will be doing an unboxing of that um, probably live so that we can all check it out, but it's beautiful. And she like did it like a crowdfunding type of thing, like you put in the order and once she had enough to support it, you know, based on, you know, her prototypes and sampling, those of us who believed in the project, we, um, we put our money where our mouths and our minds and our hearts are. And here she is and uh, able to share this since uh, the beginning of the year. So I just got it this week. Thank God she just got them all out. And so I'll be we'll be unboxing it and uh, taking a look at that. OK, so anyway. The ancestors want your attention. Focus on them. And focus on yourself and watch for the magic that you've been promised, All right? That Ten of Cups with that sunshine, right? This happy, loving family and relationship. Sunny outlooks, happy days, new beginnings. Whether you are in a relationship or by yourself, 
It's going to be a lovely day. Soon come. All right. Talk to you guys later. Love you. Don't forget, hit the notification bell when you subscribe so that you'll know when I do that live. Talk to you soon. Peace.